And Jami says in a passage which has been translated by Professor Brown, even from earthly love, thy face avert not, since to the real it may serve to raise thee. Ere A, B, C are rightly apprehended, how canst thou con the pages of thy Quran? A sage so heard I unto whom a student came craving counsel on the course before him, said, If thy steps be strangers to love's pathways, Depart, learn love, and then return before me. For shouldst thou fear to drink wine from forms flung on, thou canst not drain the draught of the ideal. But yet beware, be not by form belated. Strive rather with all speed the bridge to traverse. If to the born thou fain, Wouldst bear thy baggage upon the bridge, let not thy footsteps linger. Emerson sums up the meaning of this where he says, Beholding in many souls the traits of the divine beauty, and separating in each soul that which is divine from the taint which it has contracted in the world, the lover ascends to the highest beauty. to the love and knowledge of the divinity by steps on this ladder of created souls. Man's love of God, says Hujriri, is a quality which manifests itself in the heart of the pious believer and the form of veneration and magnification so that he seeks to satisfy his beloved and becomes impatient and restless in his desire for vision of him and cannot rest with anyone except him and grows familiar with the recollection of him, and abjures the recollection of everything besides. Repose becomes unlawful to him, and rest flees from him. He is cut off from his all habits and associations, and renounces sensual passion, and turns towards the court of love, and submits to the law of love, and knows God by his attributes of perfection, Inevitably, such a man will love his fellow men. Whatever cruelty they inflict upon him, he will perceive only the, chast the chastening hand of God, whose bitters are very sweets to the soul. Because it's said that when God loves a man, he endows him with three qualities in token thereof, a bounty like that of the sea, a sympathy like that of the sun, and a humility like that of the earth, no suffering can be too great, no devotion too high for the piercing insight and burning faith of a true lover. Ibn al-Arabi claims Islam is peculiarly the religion of love inasmuch as the Prophet Muhammad is called God's beloved Habib. But though some traces of this doctrine occur in Al-Quran, its main impulse was unquestionably derived from Christianity. While the oldest Sufi literature, which is written in Arabic and unfortunately has come down to us in a fragmentary state, is still dominated by the chronic insistence on fear of a law, it also bears conspicuous marks of the opposing Christian tradition as in Christianity through Dionysius and other writers than of the Neoplatonic school. So in Islam, and probably under the same influence, the devotional and mystical love of God soon developed an ecstasy and enthusiasm which finds in the sensuous imagery of human love the most suggestive medium for its expression. Dr. Ng observes that the Suvis appear like true Asiatics to have attempted to give a sacramental and symbolic character to the indulgence of their passions. I need not again point out that such a view of genuine Sufism is both superficial and incorrect. Love, like Gnosis, is in its essence a divine gift, not anything that can be acquired if the whole world wished to attract love, they could not, and if they made the utmost efforts to repel it, they could not. Those who love God are those whom God loves. I fancied that I loved him, said Bayezid, but on consideration I saw that his love preceded mine. Junaid can define love 
as the substitution of the qualities of the beloved for the qualities of the lover. In other words, love signifies the passing away of the individual self. It is an uncontrollable rapture, a God-sent grace which must be sought by ardent prayer and aspiration. O thou in whose bat well curved my heart like a ball is laid, nor ever a hairbreadth swerved from thy bidding, nor disobeyed. I have washed mine outward clean, the water I drew and poured. Mine inward is thy demesne, do thou keep it stainless, Lord. Jalaluddin teaches that man's love is really the effect of God's love by means of an apologue. One night, a certain devotee was praying aloud when Satan appeared to him and said, How long wilt thou cry? Oh, Allah, be quiet, for thou wilt get no answer. The devotee hung his head in silence. After a little while, he had a vision of the prophet Keter. who said to him, Ah, why hast thou ceased to call on God? Because the answer, Here am I, came not, he replied. Kither said, God hath ordered me to go to thee and say thus, Was it not I that summoned thee to service? Did not I make thee busy with my name? Thy calling, Allah, was my here am I. Thy yearning pain, my messenger to thee. Of all those tears and cries and supplications, I was the magnet, and I gave them wings. Divine love is beyond description, yet its signs are manifest. Sorry, Al. Sa'adi questioned Junaid concerning the nature of love. 